Welcome to That's the Word, wholesome tales for the whole family. I'm Father James Yamauchi. Today's story, three little notebooks. Felix sat in his apartment alone. His wife was dead. He still could not believe it. She was really gone. He had known this day would come for many years. She had been sick for much of their marriage, but still it felt like that day would never come. He looked around the small apartment. Every little thing reminded him of his dead wife. Her bookshelf, from which she used to read. The chair, where she would sit and converse with him about the world. The desk, where she used to write. He looked down at the three moleskin notebooks in his hand. He had just returned from dinner with his sister-in-law and her husband. His sister-in-law had confided that she had a gift for Felix. It was his late wife's diary. For many years, she had journaled about the day's events and filled these notebooks with her deepest thoughts and reflections. His sister-in-law gave Felix these three little notebooks, hoping he could find some comfort in them. Felix opened up the first notebook and began to read, and kept reading, and kept reading. He could not stop, and he was shocked at what these pages contained. This woman, whom he had lived with for over 25 years, had a side to her that he had never seen. He had known that she was religious, but he could not have imagined the profound spiritual life that she lived, which she had recorded in these little notebooks day after day. Even though his wife was deeply religious, and he had been raised in the faith. Felix was an atheist. His wife found out the day before their marriage that he had abandoned the church and become deeply anti-clerical. While Felix loved his wife, he would often deride and mock her religion. He saw in these notebooks that his actions had hurt her greatly, far more than he could have ever imagined. His wife had recognized very early on that she could never hope to win him back to the faith or convince any of his anti-clerical friends by argument. Her call was to live life with love, showing care and concern and cheerfulness for everyone she met, especially her husband. He could not believe that she had put up with him, with his pettiness, 
with all of his faults in so quiet and meek a manner. Reading these notebooks became part of Felix's daily routine. Once he got to the end of the last one, he would start over from the beginning. These reflections touched him deeply and opened up for him a great interior struggle. His wife's suffering was not to be in vain. Over the coming months, Felix drew closer and closer to God, finally abandoning his anti-clerical ways and eventually abandoning the world. The man who had been the director of one of the largest insurance groups in France, entered the Dominican order in his 50s and was ordained Father Marie Albert several years later. Before he entered the order, at the encouragement of friends and family, Felix published his wife's writings. The initial 2,000 copy edition sold out within a few months. And within a year, 30,000 copies were sold. This woman's writings, full of such deep spiritual thought, touched so many, including her husband Felix, a woman who exuded God's love in an atheistic world. Elizabeth Lesur. And for this week, that's the word. This story was suggested by Jackie. Thank you very much, Jackie, for giving this great story idea. Can we mention that this is also our mother? We can. Very good. So thanks, Mom. <laughs> thanks, Mom. Great story idea. It's amazing to see the beauty of the vocation of marriage uh, manifested in the relationship here. Because we hear about Felix very much tormenting Elizabeth in some cases with his very atheistic positions, but they were a very loving couple. He really, truly loved her and he cared about her deeply. And you see that in the way that he nursed her throughout her very long sickness throughout her life. And we were talking about this before we started recording the afterward. What was her sickness? Not entirely clear on that. It seems like it was something that was just, it, it lasted for most of their marriage. This is the turn of the century in the early 1900s, late 1800s. So they really didn't have too much that they could say about her illness, except when she had bouts of it to rest. And something you mentioned, they, they definitely had different viewpoints in life, but they were still able to to find that bond and love for one another despite their differences. And I think that's a great lesson. And my understanding is that their cause is at least being investigated, that maybe one day they could be saints. Something I found very fascinating in Elizabeth's spiritual testimony, it was like her last will and testament, the spiritual version. She says, for my family and friends, instead of sending flowers, have masses said and offer some alms for me. You see this a lot where people say in lieu of flowers, do yada, yada, yada. And I always thought, okay, that's kind of interesting. But I never considered that, hey, this is something we can do. We can have masses said for this person and offer up some alms on their behalf. Because almsgiving has merit that can be offered up. And of course, the sacrifice of the mass has merit that can be offered up for the sake of 
the deceased and for their purification. I remember one time uh, having to accompany a family to a funeral home where a death was unexpected and just all the paperwork that was necessary was overwhelming, especially when they had just lost a loved one and they have to go through all these legal documents. And that's something you can definitely do before passing away. Now it's trivia time. Dun, 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 dun. Last story's trivia question was, what does the RMS in RMS Titanic stand for? The answer is Royal Mail Ship. This story's trivia question is, what television personality went on a retreat under the direction of Father Lesur? That question again what television personality went on a retreat under the direction of Father Lasur? If you think you know the answer, email us or contact us on social media and let us know. If you enjoy That's the Word, please share the word. You can see the story extras for this story, Three Little Notebooks, at thunderrock.org where you can see Elizabeth's writings. Thunderrock.org is also where you can sign up for our weekly newsletter and where you can find our social links and our email if you have any feedback or story ideas like mom did. Thanks for listening and join us next Wednesday for another wholesome tale for the whole family.